Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Let's take up the daily quiz for today. The first question. Recently, the World Health Organization has come up with a naming system for virus variants based on country of origin, Greek alphabets, mythological figures, Roman numerals. The correct answer is option B. For naming the different variants of concern and variants of interest of the SARS coronavirus 2, the WHO has come up with a naming system that is based on Greek alphabets. This question has been taken up because we have an article in today's The Hindu that makes a reference to the Delta variant that was found in India. And latest studies on this strain of the coronavirus is capable of transmitting at a faster rate because its numerous mutations enable it to easily infect human cells. And also, studies conducted by CSIR and the Indian SARS Coronavirus 2 Genomic Consortium have shown that the Delta variant reported first in India has greater ability to evade the protection offered by vaccines. Essentially, the Delta variant is considered to be more dangerous in reducing vaccine efficacy. So it is this article that brings the naming system into question. Until recently, the different variants of the SARS coronavirus 2, they were being named after their country of origin. For example, first we had the UK variant, the South African variant, then the Brazil variant, and then came the India variant. But such naming of the variants after the country of origin triggered a major controversy as it was opposed by the respective governments because it would lead to the creation of a stigma against the country. It would also discourage the governments from freely reporting the new variants as they would fear unnecessary stigmatization from the global community. So to replace this naming system with a more simpler version, the WHO has recently approved the usage of Greek alphabets such as Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, etc. to provide a common name that can be easily remembered by the public in the place of the technical scientific names that are assigned for the different variants. For the media and the common people, remembering the scientific names might be difficult and it actually hampers the communication of information. So under the new naming system, the scientific names will still be used by the scientific community, but they would also be provided with a simpler common name based on Greek alphabets in order to make it easier for communication. Now let's look at the second question. Project 75I recently seen in news is related to construction of nuclear powered submarines for the Indian Navy, procurement of Rafale fighter jets from France, export of BrahMos cruise missiles to Vietnam or none of the above. The correct answer is option D, none of the above. See, Project 75I is in news in this article of the Hindu. According to the article, the Defense Acquisition Council, which is headed by the country's defense minister, has approved the construction of six conventional submarines under India's Project 75I. This project is an extension of the INS Calvary class of submarines, which are essentially diesel electric conventional submarines and they are not nuclear powered submarines. These submarines come equipped with air independent propulsion technology and under this ambitious project, India would be inviting tenders from original equipment manufacturers, that is from foreign vendors, who in turn will have to tie up with strategic partners, that is domestic producers under the strategic partnership model. This is in line with India's defense procurement procedure and accordingly two domestic strategic partners have been listed by the government of India. One is Mazgao Docks Limited and the other is LNT. So foreign vendors or foreign OEMs, they will have to tie up with these Indian strategic partners to domestically produce six conventional diesel electric submarines under Project 75I. Let's look at the third question. Which of the following statements are correct? Hydrographic survey is the science of measurement and description of marine topographic features which affect maritime navigation and other sea-based activities. India lacks this technology and relies upon the United States for hydrographic surveys in the Indian Ocean region. Amongst the given statements, the second statement is incorrect. So option A is the right answer. See, hydrographic surveys make use of sonar technology and other advanced electronic sensors in order to map out the terrain of the sea floor. Along with that, other topographic features of the marine environment is mapped out and this exercise is essentially marine cartography. 
such mapping of the marine areas is very essential for maritime navigation and for all the other sea based activities because it will help in understanding the shoreline the terrain of the seabed and the features found underwater and this knowledge is absolutely essential for deploying ships and even submarines india doesn't lack this technology in fact india is one of the pioneers in hydrographic surveys the indian navy and as well as other scientific institutions they do possess this technology and india has mapped out the terrain of the indian ocean region and we even offer this technology free of cost to other friendly nations such as myanmar maldives mauritius etc this question on hydrographic survey was taken up because we have a related article in the hindu according to the article ins sandayak has been decommissioned by the indian navy this was a hydrographic survey ship which was built indigenously and apart from being used for hydrographic surveys this ship has even seen action during various key operations of the indian navy including operation pawan when indian peacekeeping forces were deployed in sri lanka to enforce the terms of the indo sri lanka peace accord of 1987 it was also involved in operation rainbow during which humanitarian assistance was delivered after the 2004 indian ocean tsunami and it even participated in a hadr exercise with the united states that is humanitarian assistance and disaster relief exercise known as tiger triumph let's move on to the fourth question which of the following statements are correct cancer immunotherapy is a new approach that exploits the body's immune system to put up a fight against cancer india's first indigenous tumor antigen spag9 was discovered in 1998 this antigen has received the trademark aspagnii and is being used in dendritic cell based immunotherapy in treating various forms of cancer including cervical cancer ovarian cancer and breast cancer all the three statements are correct option d is the right answer this question was taken up because we have a press release from the ministry of science and technology according to which the nii the national institute of immunology has received a trademark for india's first indigenous tumor antigen spag9 this research was funded by the department of biotechnology under the ministry of science and tech see cancer immunotherapy is a new treatment approach which makes use of body's immunity to put up a fight against cancer cells under this approach either the immune system is given a boost through antigens or the t cells are trained to identify the cancer cells and to target them so for this approach the discovery of the key antigens are crucial and india's first indigenous tumor antigen spag9 was discovered in 1998 by dr anil suri of the nii several other research institutions were also a part of this project and this antigen has recently received a trademark known as aspagnii that is antigen spag9 nii this is used in dc based immunotherapy or dendritic cell immunotherapy which can be useful in treating many forms of cancer now let's look at a practice question from the 2018 prelims paper consider the following statements most of the world's coral reefs are in tropical waters more than one third of the world's coral reefs are located in the territories of australia indonesia and philippines coral reefs host far more number of animal phyla than those hosted by tropical rainforests all the three statements are correct option d is the right answer if you look at this map provided by nasa which depicts coral distribution around the world it shows that coral reefs are concentrated in tropical waters that is between 30 degree north and 30 degree south latitudes more than one third of these reefs are concentrated in the australia indonesia philippines belt coral reefs thrive in a temperature range of 22 to 29 degree celsius which is ideally found in tropical waters and coral reefs display enormous biodiversity and they are said to have four times more animal phyla than even tropical rainforests that's the reason why coral reefs are referred to as the tropical rainforests of the sea so this makes it very clear that option d is the right answer now coming to the fact of the day let's look at this article from the hindu according to this article 17 cases of usage of chemical weapons by syria has been noted by the opcw the opcw has informed the un security council that its experts and investigators have detected 
17 cases of likely usage of chemical weapons, even though it has been 8 years since Syria joined the Chemical Weapons Convention. This convention bans the production and usage of chemical weapons and the member countries are obligated to declare their stockpile and to take measures to destroy the stockpile and stop producing or procuring chemical weapons. But despite these obligations under the Chemical Weapons Convention, Syria has been found to possess stockpiles of chemical weapons and in at least 17 cases, these weapons have been reportedly used and this has been confirmed by the OPCW. So in this context, let's talk about the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons or OPCW. This is essentially an intergovernmental organization which was set up to enforce and implement the Chemical Weapons Convention. This convention came into force in 1997 and the OPCW acts as its implementing body. This organization consists of 193 member states and it is headquartered at The Hague in Netherlands. Its primary mandate is to enforce the Chemical Weapons Convention and provide for the permanent and verifiable elimination of chemical weapons stockpiles around the world. Because the usage of chemical weapons in conflict is considered to be inhuman and hence the convention tries to promote the complete destruction of chemical weapons stockpiles. So to enable countries to report on their stockpiles and to verify their destruction and their adherence to the provisions of the convention, the OPCW was set up. OPCW has the powers to carry out on the ground verification and inspection and it also evaluates the declarations made by the individual member states. OPCW can send on-site inspectors and investigators to verify the claims being made by the member states and it has the power to report on whether chemical weapons were used in any attack and it can send a team of inspectors and investigators to any member country to look for evidence whether they still produce or possess any stockpiles of chemical weapons. This organization has played a key role in the elimination of chemical weapons around the world and in recognition of these efforts, it was even awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2013. As for the obligations of this convention, India enacted the Chemical Weapons Convention Act of 2000 under which the National Authority for Chemical Weapons Convention was set up under the Cabinet Secretariat which directly reports to the Prime Minister. This national authority has ensured that by 2009, India eliminated all its chemical weapons stockpile and it has provided for the complete implementation and enforcement of the provisions of the convention in India. So with this, let's conclude our discussion for today. Thanks for watching.